Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we'll be talking about Klondike, which is the new television series on the Discovery Channel, which is the first ever scripted series they've ever had on the, the station. Which And surprisingly, it's awesome. So, let's get started. So Klondike takes place in the late 1890s Yukon, and basically it centers on two characters journeying from uh, Vermont all the way to um, the Yukon. Uh, it centers on the two characters, Bill Haskell and Byron Epstein. Epstein, I, I'm sure I'm pronouncing that right. And Richard Madden is the one who plays Bill Haskell. And if you guys know, he's from Game of Thrones and plays Rob Stark. Now that Rob Stark's dead, spoilers, I guess. It's kind of late, though, for that. He basically transferred over from Game of Thrones all the way to Klondike as the main character and lead, which is awesome and which drove me to watch the show in the first place. And that's why I was really excited for Klondike and I'm really excited to be reviewing this episode because of him. And he does a killer job in this show. Augustus Prue, he plays Byron Epstein. Epstein, again, I don't care. Epstein, Epstein. Anyway, the chemistry between these two characters as they journey from Vermont to the Yukon is quite uh, great, actually. I, I see them playing bantering off one another. Uh, Bill is more of a uh, down-to-earth, grounded, but yet adventurous uh, character who has a kind heart. Uh, both these characters do, but he's more of a um, thinker rather than a, a doer, kind of, and... Byron is the kind of the opposite of him, and they balance out each other very nicely. Byron is kind of street smarts kid, and Bill is kind of like a book smart kid. Because Byron, as you can tell, when the money situation, he was hanging on to the money, and you know that kind of symbolized like some more street smarts going on and playing out. And that that's why I really like these two characters bouncing off each other, balancing them out, and. Uh, it was great to see these two uh, mush together. But it was also very sad and heartfelt when I saw Byron get shot and killed. I thought, mm, well, maybe that was too early to do that. But for the sake of the plot, for the sake of advancing Bill's um, character development, I, I could tell that they kind of needed that push to drive that home uh, to the audience too that this is a treacherous world you know and that's not just filled with adventures and um you know gun ho stuff even though that takes place in this show which i'm fantastically excited about and i love about the show the beginning of the episode had them cruising down the river all the way to the yukon and i could just get that vibe of like hey this is like an adventure this isn't just like a like a gritty tv show you know it's not just like you know a game of thrones show where it's like really dark and brutal and it's not like uh, hell on wheels when it's like brutal like brutally dark all the time it's not it's tasteless kind of in my opinion for hell on wheels but i like the balance that they had with this and it was educational too i looked up some of these characters um belinda mulrooney for example she was actually a real character um even the judge father judge which is played by sam shepherd he was a real character too and was nicknamed i think the saint of dawson when he was um dawson is that where this takes place i forget uh for for establishing a uh, actually first hospital there in where, where it takes place now um belinda maruni she was the first person ever to like establish uh, trade routes basically to to the, um, the place where they're digging gold and uh it's just like fascinating how like they're combining uh characters that are both real and fictional into this world and meshing them together to build this universe around them. And it's also, it's not just in your face um, historical, but it's very entertaining and very enjoyable. And it, it makes people look up these things uh, on the internet and just show that, you know, that it gets them interested in history again. I think that's what we're missing in television these days is like, get us interested in the real world. And this fictional universe 
is great because it brings the historical and fictional together, meshes them so well, and that's why I really like this series so far. And you know, we haven't even talked about the show, like the in-depth analysis of the show. So let's get started onto Richard Madden, Bill Haskell's character. So let's go. So what I took away from this first episode was the message of man versus nature and man versus society in terms of basically Bill like trekking through the woods of the Yukon and testing his elements and hiking up the big mountain and testing his elements against nature for the first time in a long time and also testing his wits against society and watching him watching society break down in its rawest form. This is a place in Dawson City where there basically is very limited law or no law whatsoever. And it's showing that people at their rawest form breaking down and showing that, you know, they're um, the horrors of what people are capable of for just digging up something that might be in some sla slub of mud somewhere it's sickening and it actually took place and it's sad really and bill haskell he serves as the point of view of us as we're looking at this world and it's it's quite sickening what he sees and you slowly see him morph from this gung-ho guy to this paranoid schizophrenic with a gun basically when he was at his tent after his best friend got shot and it, it, it goes to show like they actually paid a lot of attention to detail on his character and like his transformation all in a first episode which is awesome and it, that whole sense of man versus society is 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 cast to the viewer and reminds them that this is a very dangerous place and world and serves as a reminder of what could our world might be today too now, Father Judge, on the other hand, he basically serves as a sort of beacon of light in this raw Dawson City world, uh, and he's tempted by evil and the, the uh, symbol, symbolic um, showing of the devil, which is placed in uh, The Count, which is played by Tim Roth, which does a fantastic job of portraying a terrible villain, and i really liking him, too. He's just... a uh, raw tough british guy and just wants to stick it out to everybody except himself he wants to get number one the city and he's up against um the the uh, belinda marooney and i i i thought father judge um temptation of and they showed his humanity as he had his bags ready to leave dawson city and was tempted to leave because of the pressures of evil all around him, all surrounding around him. But instead, he picked up his cross and went up in outside in the freezing cold with the freezing rain shoving on his face as he planted the cross on his church. And that is a very noble, and it symbolized that this guy is not messing around. He's a badass priest, if you will, and um, as you can see, he knows how to handle a gun very well from shooting the wolf and protecting Bill. And so he gets the job done, and he shows uh, that there is hope and there is light in in this Dawson City. And um, his ba greatest ally, I believe, in the show will be Bill Haskell and possibly um, Belinda Marooney but even though she says that she wants his property as well. So it'll be very tempting to see what happens to um, Father Judge. And what I've researched about him is that he will succeed in his endeavor, but he might have a terrible outcome. So we'll see what happens and how truthful they'll hold up to history. Now going to the basically temp temptress uh, which is uh, Belinda Marooney, was at, played by Abby Cornish, on the other hand. And I have a whole bunch of notes that I have here, so these characters. So hopefully I get all these names right and pronouncing them all right. But anyway, Belinda, she has some sort of connection to the Count, as we see in this episode, whether it's a romantic, whether it's a partner, or maybe it's both that they had in the past, we don't know. Probably we'll find out next episode or possibly in the series. But 
uh, I'm curious to see where that takes them. And she was debating whether to shoot him or not, but she couldn't. And so that showed maybe she had a huge amount of respect for him, or maybe she had loose ties that haven't been snapped yet. And so we'll see that take into effect, and we'll see that basically um, fighting over the land, which is owned by Bill, and seeing whether Bill will give in to that or not. Also, a nice surprise, and I don't know if you guys noticed this, but there is a character of Jack London, which is in this TV series. And if you guys haven't been paying attention in your history class or or your po English or whatever in high school, then you'll know that Jack London, which is actually a, a, a writer, a, a fictional writer, who wrote White Fang and other various forms of literature, and he's actually in this TV series. And Jack London, he's played by Johnny uh, S Simons in this show. And I'm curious to see uh, his perspective and view of the world around him. And he's m probably going to be some sort of um, down to earth or um, fantasizer, basically, who is not quite with the world around him, but is making up and fantasizing uh, uh, things around him as an author. And uh, it shows through his works that he does that as well. He fantasizes about the outdoors and, and life around him and the treacherous winters, you know, and he dramatizes it. But hopefully um, we'll, we'll see through his eyes this harsh world. And I'm looking forward to that as well, um, seeing Jack London's character grow and evolve and influence Bill as well. And it seems like every character in this series is sort of connected to Bill, which is also in turn connected to the audience. And so I think they do a great job of hooking the viewer in right away and just with all these new characters and just uh, filling you up with this great sense of this fantasy world, but also historical world as well of Dawson City. And if you guys... Uh, after this review, I uh, urge you to look up Dawson City and the Gold Rush late 1980s on Wikipedia if you feel like it, or even go to discoverychannel.com and looking at that stuff. So, anyway, back to the review. And last but not least, I want to talk about the relationship between Byron and Bill. And throughout this whole episode, I thought that they would just become both the main characters of this adventure, and I was hoping that they would. But that's not the case. And I felt that these two characters were basically um, part of one another, you know? And when Byron died, it was like having part of Bill die, you know? That sense of adventure and gung-ho, you know? Uh, that innocence, if you will, was sort of tainted and destroyed by the death of his friend. And as we see, we see the decline of Bill slowly when he's going insane, if with the gun and the tent in the side of the tent against like the woman who's offering him food and we see his slowly decline as a human start to take place but is saved when he goes uh and reinforced by the sense of family and community that he once probably felt in his past when he was a high school student and that sense of community was when he went over to that woman's house and saw a family and saw togetherness and I can even see on his face and Richard Madden does a great job of doing this he takes in the character and he he has a great facial expression on his uh, on his face and he just shows without saying anything or talking he shows a sense of depth of the character and how he feels during this sense and I could see a, a faint hint of him just like taking it in you know and just saying you know okay uh, there's a lot of bad in this world, but there's some good. And that's reinforced with Father Judge as well when he goes and visits him and talks to him about uh, his friend dying and wants a service for him. And it shows that Father Judge is also quite versatile in, in different religions, Judaism and Catholicism as well. And that shows a sense of Father Judge. He, he probably searches for a greater meaning in life than just one thing, you know? Like, religion, it, it, it answers the why, but not the how. Science answers the how, in my opinion. Now, Father Judge, he probably realizes that one religion doesn't answer everything, and he has a broader sense, and it shows 
through that discussion between uh, Richard Madden, well, Bill Haskell, that he is out to uh, open people's eyes to not just one religion, but, you know, just accepting others. And I really like Father Judge, and I thought I wouldn't. I thought he would be, like, a really downhearted, like, whip belt <laughs> type of priest, but he's not. And he's the only priest in Dawson City, which is quite amazing. And so I, I my heart extends out to this, this father who actually went there uh, and actually did this in real life. And what he actually felt when he established this, this, this um, community and this hospital and this church in this terrible, terrible city of Dawson with all these murderers and heart felt struck in people, you know, and it blows your mind as to what they actually experienced there. And that goes unsaid sometimes in these television series. So anyway, let's move on. And I want to talk about the Native Americans, and they do a great job of showing them. Now, these Native Americans, as you show, as you see, um, First of all, if you guys want to watch this series, I rec also recommend Into the West, and it shows a great or a great transformation of the early 1800s to late 1800s of the Native American culture at the time. And uh, these basically Native Americans at the late 1890s have lost everything. They have been decimated. All their land is gone, basically, and they only have the small patch of dirt of land and if you notice with the, their attire and their guns that they're basically um, sort of uh, quote-unquote domesticated if you will I, by by the culture around them and that's a harsh word to say domesticated because they have their own culture and they have their own physical society and they even say that we're not savages and that was quite funny to me because here all these people think that these Native Americans are savages when they themselves are are terrible, evil people in Dawson City. And it's just heart struckening when the law uh, accuses the Native Americans as um, Byron's killer. And Bill hates it in his gut. I just can tell that he wants to find the real killer of Byron, but is struck when uh, he, he can't do that. And he tried to. And it's terrible to see even now in the days where you know people just um, uh, blame other people that are just in less power instead of the people who are above. And the Native Americans in this show are very much in less power, and it it shows too. And I, I I'm curious to see what they're going to do in the next episode of retaliation against Dawson City for convicting um, these tribesmen from their own group of doing no no crime whatsoever, and. Very curious to see that and see Bill's reaction to this as well. Now, basically, we haven't even talked about Bill's claim of the land and what that means. Well, basically, the claim of the land around him that he bought basically put a huge target sign on him. And that's why people didn't want to buy it because they knew they'd be either killed maybe by the Indians or killed by other people around them trying to get that land, or, you know, they, they wanted to lay low and dig for gold, which is in a safe area, you know, or, or somewhat of a safe area in the, in the gold digging lands. But when Bill bought that land, that painted a huge target on himself, and it was sad to see that Byron's share was stolen off his dead body uh, and sold to uh, Belinda Marooney as well. And so now Belinda Marooney's his partner, and that is interesting because I, she is in the same place as what well, she was in the same place as Bill, because I um judging by history and when I researched about her, she came over there basically with nothing, uh, and I, I, she sees through Bill's eyes that uh, uh, image of herself at, at his time and what he could accomplish if he if by the right determination and uh, by especially influenced by her as well and so we'll see where these two, two characters um, go forth but don't be fooled by her because she is very um, conniving as well I think because it takes um, a person as we learn from Game of Thrones a person um, who is basically versatile in uh, human relations but also at the nitty-gritty stuff that people don't want to do. And so that's what gets you to the top in this world around them. 
It's very heartening to see what will happen. And I hope that <laughs> it doesn't get Bill killed to be partners with her. So, without further ado, I hope you guys enjoyed this series. Well, not series, but the first episode. And I need to watch the second episode, even though this review came out really late. And I'm probably going to go do that as well. So, without further ado, I hope you guys have a great time. And that's all for now. Alright guys, this is Summer Hayes, signing off.